Okay, this is your initial uh, biology um, video on scientific method and experimentation. So the objective in this case is students will have a basic understanding of the scientific method and experimentation. Remember, your learning objective needs to go at the top of your notes. So underneath um, scientific method, which is your title of your notes, you need to have below it the learning objective. And I'll say it again. Students will have a basic understanding of the scientific method and experimentation. One of the advantages is if you didn't get that, stop this, rewind it till about 30 seconds, and then you should be able to watch it again and get it. All right? So, continuing on, we have what is science? Okay? In case you're wondering what that is, that is an ant carrying a microchip. So, the goal of science is three things. To investigate and understand the natural world, to explain events in the natural world, and to use those explanations to make useful predictions. Now, the mechanism or the, the, um, the tool that science uses in order to do the investigation, okay, and to be able to explain and then from those explanations do predictions is called the scientific method. Now, everyone's interpretation of the scientific method is somewhat different. However, um, I personally adopted one uh, kind, and um, I'll show you that in this video. So I'll go ahead and write this down. Pause the video if you need to, so you can write it all down, and then you don't have to uh, um, listen to dead air. So, next, science. It is a way of organizi organizing w or an organized way to uh, using the evidence in the natural world. So this organization right here is by the scientific method. So what we would do is um, the very beginning thing when it comes to science is being observant. Okay, you need to see what's going on around you. Now, once we have an observation, this is where it starts. You need to see something that interests you or something that makes you question something about life or something about a concept okay so let's go ahead and take a look at observation that's the first step observation after observation how about this just go ahead and write all this down and then I'll explain it and jot that down. So we start off with an observation, like I said. From observation, we are going to have a question. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do an example as we do this. Okay. My example is my flashlight it doesn't work Okay, for whatever reason. I have no idea why it just doesn't work. So my question for such an observation would be something along the lines of, why doesn't my flash drive or flash drive flashlight work? The hypothesis, okay, your hypothesis is the answer to the question. It is not an if-then statement, okay? So if I ask the question, what is wrong with my flashlight? The hypothesis would be the light bulb is burned out, or the batteries are dead, or it's not turned on. 
or it's uh, the battery connection's dirty. Okay, there's a wide variety of different hypotheses to answer a question. So what you would do is I'm going to go ahead and say my my the, my hypothesis for why my flashlight's not working is the um uh, the, the light bulb's burned out. So then I go to a prediction. This is the if then statement. If I change the light bulb, then my flashlight will work. So if I change my uh, light bulb, that is part of the test. So the experiment or test. So I will end the test, I will change the light bulb. Now, if I change the light bulb and the lights, my flashlight still doesn't work, then that means that my hypothesis was rejected. And if my hypothesis is rejected, that means I have to make a new one. So I need to now have a different reason. I already ruled out that the, the, the flashlight bulb must have been fine. So there's something else wrong. So what's my next answer to the question? I, the, the batteries are dead. Okay, so my prediction, if I change the battery, then the flashlight will work. So I change the battery, which the changing of the battery is considered your test or your experiment. I changed it, and what do you know? My flashlight works, which means if it is not rejected, if a test is not rejected, or if a hypothesis is not rejected, then one of two things are going to happen. One, you leave it as it is, and your hypothesis has been not rejected, or you, from there, and this is what happens in real science, from there, you go back up, and you start with another observation, and you do the whole process over again until you try to find as much information as you can. And if you have a whole bunch of information from hypotheses that have been um, that have not been rejected, then you can then move up the hierarchy into um, the scientific community, which could eventually lead to the um, the proposal of a theory, which is higher up, and we don't need to go into that right now. But mainly scientific method, observation, question, hypothesis, prediction, and then your test. Now, the results of your data, or the results of your test, usually gives you data. Now, there's two different types of data. There's quantitative data, which... The quantitative data which is numbers, okay? And then you have qualitative data, which does not involve numbers. It involves descriptions, okay? So descriptive data is qualitative data, and quantitative data is based on numbers. Now, depending on the type of lab we do, we'll be able to uh, determine what type of data it is at the time being.